so when we think about the Palestinian refugee experience in particular, becoming twice refugees, so first from Palestine to Syria and now from Syria to surrounding states in Europe, we are thinking in terms of the historicization of a particular refugee population, which also happens to be the world's biggest refugee population. So we have about five million Palestinian refugees, uh, and, I, and they're also kind of um, the longest, most enduring, in the sense that they were created with the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, and um, because the right to return was not implemented as per UN Resolution 192, and because of the way in which the UN body set up to protect Palestinian refugees that we spoke about today, um, the UN Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, or UNRWA, um, how it defined the Palestine refugee, it made the status of those who left and their children and the grandchildren refugees, and the way Arab states as well then passed certain legislation which ensured the Arab states did not give them access to citizenship because of the right to return, but urged Arab states to give them kind of um, equal rights, um, which didn't happen in most cases, as we also heard from Nael's um, contribution. But the point being is that we have this kind of history of a, you know, a long seven decade old refugee population that has not been able to go back. Um, that, and through its historicization, really I think one of the main contributions, at least for me, that I take away from today, from all the discussion we've been had, is that it really throws into disarray the whole crisis discourse. I mean, what we hear today um, in terms of this kind of refugee crisis, uh, the biggest p movement of people since World War II, I think I was having this conversation with Claudia about how this was very much the discourse also during the Balkan War, the biggest refugee population since World War II, and so forth. So what is this first time and second time refugee status of Palestinians and of refugees more generally? Tell, tell us about the, this, this so-called crisis. When, when do we, you know, what, how, how does what's happening today get to be constructed as a crisis? What, what visions, um, what kind of things does it evade? What does it make clear? What does it make not clear? And so forth. And within that, in terms of um, also some of the themes that came out was um, the way in which certain international humanitarian law um, provisions create hierarchies within refugee statuses. So we learned today that Palestinian refugees are not protected under the, United, the UNHCR, the UN Agency for, Palis for Refugees in general, because they fall under UNRWA. And so when they go to surrounding states now having escaped Syria, when they go to places like Turkey and Egypt, where there is no UNRWA, they actually there's a protection gap. Um, so these are all issues that really emerge for, for me today and make me really question these kind of different refugee regimes uh, on the one hand and what they tell us about who gets to be classified as a refugee, what kind of hierarchies do they create and also it resonates in terms of um, how people get accorded refugee status. So um, when people come here, for example, if you're deemed to come from a safe country, you go back. Uh, you don't go, you can be sent back or if not sent back. And then also the question of what is this crisis? Crisis for whom, for what? Um, what happens when we look at other refugee populations?